there is no shortage of 10 year old rape victims. Right. There's, there's victims from infants through the elderly, both yep. genders. There is more than you can count. There are so many monsters out there. So for me, what I find so deeply offensive is that they had to make up a fake one. So what's going on, Todd? Jesse, thanks for having me on, but I shouldn't be here. I don't know whether or not we should consider this good news or not. I wish Dr. Bernard didn't have to go through this, but she does. Dr. Caitlin Bernard is suing the Attorney General of Indiana for defamation of character. And I'm glad that she is because he stepped out of bounds going, not only coming after her, but also misrepresenting what she did and how she did it. And I'm glad that she is fighting back. And that's why I said somewhat good news on the other side of this. I wish she didn't have to go through this. So here we go. Dr. Caitlin Bernard is suing Indiana Attorney General Todd Rokita for defamation and making multiple false, misleading, and incendiary comments against abortion service providers, reproductive care doctors, and abortion rights activists. You better go ahead on, Doc. So we now know that the Attorney General in Indiana went on Fox News several times and told lies about Dr. Bernard. He intimated that she did not follow proper protocol, that she did not report uh, a rape victim. And then we have this uh, abortion activist acting as a doctor with a history of failing to report. And we're going to fight this uh, to the end. Uh, including looking at her licensure uh, if she failed to report. And in Indiana, it's a crime uh, for uh, to not report, to intentionally not report. There was an investigation conducted that determined that Dr. Caitlin Bernard did everything correctly, even in protecting the identity of the child. So she did everything that she was supposed to do. She did it correctly. Yet that did not stop this conniving, Republican extremist attorney general from maligning and defaming her name. Yeah, he did that. But now, hopefully, he will pay the consequences for his lies. And while I am glad to see Dr. Bernard take action against this attorney general, push back against him, and hope, hopefully this will be a caution to other Republican extremist attorney generals not to play these types of games, the larger impact here is that this doctor has to waste her time going through this, filing this kind of lawsuit, taking up all kinds of emotional capital to do so. Can you imagine what it's like to be a doctor who has to perform an abortion on a 10-year-old baby, little girl? She's, she's a baby for most of us, if you grown, grown. But can you imagine that the emotional toll that that took? And then now to deal with this political madness just further exacerbates. It also adds to a greater challenge that abortion care providers have to face every single day in this country because of what the Supreme Court of the United States did when they abolished Roe. So this is not just about Dr. Bernard. This is about an entire system that is upside down because of an extremist Supreme court and we have to make sure that we are looking out for so make sure that you are supporting dr bernard i know that there fun there's fundraising going on uh, for her legal fund just please lift her up and other abortion care providers access to abortion is health care plain and simple this is not about whether or not you agree this is not about your religious beliefs surrounding abortion that's a whole nother debate the main thing is that it should be legal safe and rare and that women should have the autonomy over their bodies to make that decision. In the case of the 10 year old, she had no autonomy. She was a victim of rape. And these fools just can't let it go. They are not the party of pro-life. They pro-birth and they don't give a damn about these kids once they get here. They sure didn't care about the life of this 10 year old, for sure. As far as I'm concerned, Dr. Bernard is a, is a shero and she deserves a lot of credit for having the courage to do what she's doing and to put up in the face of all of this blowback from the extremist side, putting up with all of this. Something that can be done, and you're going to hear me say this ad nauseum over and over again, this Congress needs to codify Roe. Post haste. They're well, way behind. We also need this Congress to expand the United States Supreme Court because the extremists that are on the court right now are not going to stand up for the needs of the people of this country. So whether it's about abortion rights or environmental justice,
they are just not going to do the right thing because they bought and sold too. Although they are appointed to those seats, they bought and sold. And this court is, is, is going to be a roadblock to justice, unfortunately. And the only way to correct that, the thing that must be done, is expansion of the Supreme Court of the United States of America. So I don't know why this Congress and this president is playing around with it. We need bold action to beat back against neo-fascism. That is what must happen.